Good evening, everybody. How are you getting on? It is your boy, DC, and this is Out of the Fog. And we are a local bop that goes across the province and beyond. And we're talking about all the change makers and the do-gooders and the fun havers. And we love this because it makes our province a more rewarding and successful place to live. Tonight, we have two killers in the game coming through. Adam Pike. You know him, you love him, he's all over the shop, and we're gonna learn all about what led him to get to where he's at. And then we got Pam Martin McDonald, and she is the owner of Meridian, and she's gonna talk about her own wellness journey and how she can help you get there as well. It's Out of the Fog, we're gonna hang out right after the break. Come on back. next week's spelling bee? Well, I think you should sign up for it. You good, girl? I'm good. You good? Yeah. You be okay. You have to think, young brother, about your future. Things are going to be different, I promise. Right. I'm not running. I'm choosing. That's what the is for. You got to stick together, right? Right. Well, I'll always be the hurricane. Watching Rogers TV St. John's. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Welcome back, everybody. It is out of the fog. And what can I tell you? I love having people that I feel like should have been on the show a million times, but right. just literally are on the show for the first time. This is one such person. Adam Pike, everybody, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great, man. Glad that you're yeah. here. Yeah. For I'm, the first time slash second time. It was very last minute type of thing, but yeah. you know, it's, that's why things not? happen like that, you know. Yeah. We've been, I mean, I've been following you for a long time. We've been chatting on Instagram a little bit. True. We never hang out because you're too cool. Yeah, it's true. I know. Um, so thank I you. figured I'd take the chance to like actually wow, be really in your presence for once. Putting yourself so out thank there. Thank you for having me. Well, we were saying that, you know, in COVID life. Yeah the opportunity to be physically anywhere yeah, is very yeah. limited. I feel like we're all connected through social media. It's it. true. Yeah. We're doing it for the gram, baby. We're doing it for the gram. <laughs> Speaking of which, follow me on, no, I'm joking. Uh, so I'll tell you what, coming on the show, super yeah. cool. There's so many things we can talk about because you're a very dynamic individual. Has I have, anyone a, lot, told I have you this? a lot going on. Has anyone mentioned to you that you are all over in the different arenas? <laughs> You're an entrepreneur, got your own fitness brand and yeah. products going on, training flat out, doing national fights for pay-per-view, on Big Brother. I mean, there's well, you know what? you can't I, do. I, I feel like, I, yeah, I'm doing all those things, but I feel like I'm not doing enough. In my head, I feel like I, I need to be doing more. There's more that I could be doing. I could be working harder. That's, 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 what, that's the way you that's need what to be. I feel. Yeah. Because I think there's um, a lot of us who are like, geez, I just can't wait to stop doing stuff and just hang out on the couch. No, that's like, not where you I live. actually just recently started doing, uh, well, not recently, um, 75 Hard Challenge. I don't know if have you ever What's heard that? about it. So it's, it's uh, the 75 Hard Challenge is you work out twice a day. Um, there's no drinking, like, no drinking, crazy. I know. Like, not even a sip. And you know me, like, I, I like... I like out on the go and a few wobbles. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're Who not doesn't? allowed any drinking. And there's, like, all these little small tasks, like meditating, uh, cold showers. Who started this? Uh, I don't know the guy. I, I, I can send you the link after, but uh, it, it's a... Wim Hof. Yeah, One maybe. of these cats. So anyways, I started doing that. 70, it's now... I'm like, this is day 82. Of what? Of this challenge. Like, I just... And how many days I just it? completed the challenge. And you're still doing it. Yes, I'm on at day 82 right now. So the, uh, after, there's 75 hard and then there's live hard. So live hard is like a year thing. So now I'm currently on like phase one. It's so crazy to think about because I've never gone this, this long without drinking before. Living away as you did for so long, which I did not know. Lived away for 10 years. Lived finished 10 his years. last exam and peace. Literally finished my last exam in high school and we drove to Fort McMurray like two hours later. No, I don't believe it. I swear to God. That's like TV stuff. Yeah. And Were you like peace, Newfoundland, smell you never? I, was, like, I couldn't wait to get out of there. Yeah. Couldn't wait. But yeah, where'd you grow up to? I, I grew up in Spaniards Bay. Oh, beautiful. So like, I didn't really know anybody in here in St. John's. Like, how far is Spaniards Bay from here, St. John's? 50 minutes, 55 okay, minutes. Right on. Depends on how fast you drive. Sure enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. know that rig I was at, I saw. Yeah. You, know, you got there pretty quick. <laughs> so you're like, peace, I'm gone. And I bring it back to the Newfie comment because 
up there had you been before you moved and drove directly there? What's that? Where had you before you moved away? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had you been up there before? Uh, no, first time. Wild. Yeah. Did you move there for work? I uh, we didn't. It, I was just getting into high school. I didn't have anything wow. going on. We just said, you know what? Let's, Who's the we? Let's uh, me and one of my buddy, my old school buddies, That's Cody. That's amazing. Yeah. Laugh. Yeah. And so, anyone call you a newfie? Anyone call me a newfie? Well, when I first went up there, nobody understood me. And I used to talk a lot faster than what I do now. And I really had to learn to like mm. try. I, I, I probably still talk fast, but I had to learn to slow my speech down. Right. I found because everybody up there talked a little slower. Sure. And they pronounce their words. They do more. that. Yes, you know what I mean? Do. So yeah, when I came, like, when I came, like I, I started like taking on their accent a bit. And you have would, a little. When I would come back, people were like, oh, you're a mainlander now. Yeah, right. Get out of here. So I was away for 10 years, and Crazy. then the whole Big Brother thing Well, happened. let's get there. Yeah. You know? And so Big Brother, you love it? Yeah, uh, Big Brother, it was a big dream of mine to be on that I show. Love that. Like, it was like I was laser focused. <laughs> like, I watched all the seasons of the US, and I told myself, when this comes to Canada, I will make that show. Like, I, I, there wasn't a doubt in my mind, because I know the type of person that I am, that when I get on there, I'm gonna excel. So I'll try it out every single year. They kept saying, like, we love you, but you're not right for this season. Right. I'm like, what do I gotta do? You know what I mean? But like now that I look back at it, every year I tried out, I wasn't really my best self mm. at that time. I thought I was. What's the lesson? But I wasn't. Um, so I kept I kept working and then season five, but or my no, not season five, my fifth time trying out. Right. That's when uh, they wanted me. And you said? I said, yeah. Sure, bye. Yeah, maybe. I'll, yeah, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're like standing behind them with your bags back. Yeah. <laughs> but they, yeah, yeah. But now, like, ever since I've been on there, I, it's kind of, Big Brother's kind of different now. I don't love it as much. Why? Because it's like, I done it. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's like, what's next? And, and um, then that brought me to. Which is crazy. Cra crazy. Um, had you always had a love for um, fighting and competition? Obviously, competition Never. is in your blood because well, you yes. wanted to be on Big Brother. So this whole social competition aspect, you must have been all over. That was, this is different. And that was such a crazy time. I like excelled in that show a lot, and like it. Anyways, I, I don't need to get into that. But the fighting thing. <laughs> Uh, I could get into this, but it's going to take a long time. The fighting thing, uh, never fought in my life. Crazy. Like, never. And there was a guy who was on season two of Big Brother. He had this big vision of, okay, let's just get reality TV stars. And boxing is like a big thing now. Like, oh, yeah, of course it Jake is. Yes, thing. Man. Yeah, so he was like, let's just get reality stars, because they're always going to have beef and whatnot, and let's do a pay-per-view event. They're like, do you want to go? I'm like, sure. Let's go. A fight. I actually, yeah, yeah. So like, I started training last March, and like, I got videos of me like learning how to punch. Like, I was terrible. I'm still not, I'm not the best, but like, the progress that I've made in one year is crazy. You're living it. Yeah. And then we did, uh, we had a fight down in Texas. Talk about it, bro. It was the craziest <laughs> thing I've ever did in my life. Like, we. I remember, I I remember walking into this arena, and like the boxing ring is there, and I'm like, "What am I doing? Like, yeah. what is life, man?" Um, it was so crazy. it's so crazy. I remember um, right before, like I was so nervous. Like right before my fight, I was in the back room by myself, and I put on this like samurai meditation. I was just there. <laughs> I was like, <sighs> like just getting myself amped, man. Yeah. 20, did that for 20 minutes, looking at myself in the mirror, like, what are you, what are you doing? And I was kind of just huffing and puffing, and then they, they called my name, and I went out there, and I stepped in the ring, and like, uh, Josh came in, uh, Josh Martinez, and I'm yeah. like, this is happening. I was like, I'm gonna kill this guy. <laughs> like, I'm gonna kill what, this what guy. What else are you gonna say? And then, of course. Yeah, so we, the, uh, the fight happened. I, actually, before the fight happened, I kind of I went like this and I stood up and I, I like, went to the thing. I looked, pointed at him and I said, You're going to the ground. And literally, like, 15 seconds in, he was on, he was on the mat. I put him on the mat like three times. But yeah. if you look back, like, it was more of like a backyard scrap because, like, I'm not a boxer. I don't know how to box, but like, I'm training to be it. Um, but yeah, I won, I, won, I won the fight, and then my, they wanted to do it again. 
So yeah. we were supposed to have another uh, fight come up in Lethbridge, Alberta on December 11th. But we and know. this time around, I was like, hey, I want to actually look like a boxer. Like, I want to look good this time. So I was like invested. I was training hard. That's when the 75 hard came in. Okay. And it uh, put it all together. 80 but, odd days uh, later, here we are. COVID happened and they kept changing the date. I'm ready for COVID. Oh, no, I'm loving it, actually. Yeah, it's great for everyone. I hope it's We're going to level rounds. three, though. I know, which is wicked. Christian's pub, God, let's go. I'll meet you there. Trust, <laughs> I'll be at that. Question, we've got like a minute left, yeah, which yeah, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll stay tuned for what's going on with that fight upcoming. Yeah. But in the final moment of life, I do want to throw cred to the entrepreneurial energies, the fitness products, yeah. the Adam Pike Fitness. How proud are you that so many people are believing in you, supporting you, buying the gear, yeah. getting healthier, feeling well? What does that mean to it's you? It's crazy to even think about because I, I only started doing that um, because of the first lockdown and mm -hmm. we didn't, didn't have the gyms and I started using resistant bands. That's so right. I'm like, resistant bands? Like, I, what, why am I not like, like selling? Actually, a company reached out to me and they wanted me to be a, like a partner of their, their company. Right. And, I, and I, I said yes. Right. But then I'm like, why am I making him money? I just do this myself. I make my own money. Yeah, so then I started with, uh, so I started making resistant bands and I, yeah, I just went from there. Um, I'll tell you what, that was the quickest hang of my natural life. Yeah. We will obviously be meeting up at the places that we like to meet up yeah. in real life. Yeah. That's level three, yeah, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, listen, any messages for the folks across the province watching this who have supported you, voted for you, buying from you, thinking you're the man? What do you got to say? You know what? I'm just a regular guy and uh, stay safe. Wow. And work hard. That's it. Wow. That's it. Thanks, man. That's it. I appreciate that. Good, t good, good little nuggets for the viewers. Good chats. Know? Thanks. Good chats. Good talk. Yeah. Guys, Adam Pike, follow him on the gram. It's a laugh a minute. He has all sorts of interesting features that you want to be tuning yeah. into. Also, living that fit life, and we all want that. It's out of the fog. We'll be right back after this break. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Janes and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosworthy.ca. And he yeah, fell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not driving. I'm way too stoned. How are you feeling, Beer? Oh, since we had that talk, I'm not driving tonight at all. <laughs> what, what about, about you, Dave? Dave? You only had a couple of drinks. And only a couple of puffs. <laughs> I don't drink and drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel when I smoked weed, too. How are we getting home, then? You can drive, Dave. Come on, Dave. Take one for the team, buddy. Don't let weed and alcohol influence your decision to drive. Yeah, I need a ride. Welcome back, everybody. It is Out of the Fog, and what can I tell you? I'm all about that wellness life. Adam talked about it before, and now I'm here with my girl Pam, and we're going to talk all about it some more. How do you feel about wellness? Tell me everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. What an open question to be asking you, right? How much time do we have? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> never enough. I'm so excited to learn more about you and have everyone at home learn more about the amazing work that you do. So I'll tell you what, I'll ask you an easy question. All right. How did you get started on this path to owning your own health and wellness company? Well, it started with my own journey of getting well. <laughs> and you that well? was. Well, that was sparked by motherhood, essentially. Go on. Yeah, yeah. So um, I had a real hard time when it came to that. And the struggles that I was feeling, and I later found out that I had postpartum depression and anxiety, and I just wonder, why is this so hard? And, you know, my kids have been my greatest inspiration. It's amazing. Yeah, so, so when the days got real hard, and let me tell you, some of those days got really hard, that I couldn't get out of bed, that um, I would even sometimes be shaking and have to pull over in, you know, off the road just to kind of get clear to know where I was and what I was doing. Completely overwhelmed, and I, I found out after as well that I had been carrying the weight of others. Hmm. Others' fears, others' expectations, uh, and also societal norms. 
Um, do you agree that we all carry the expectations and the weights of others? To varying degrees, yeah, for sure. What and we, causes us to do this? Well, I, I feel that a lot of it stems from our upbringing. True that. And our primitive years and all those different influences and coping techniques that we take on or just our own uh, perspectives of how to live, how to be. Sure. And those do serve us for a, a number of years until we start to really think about, I think, that voice within. Something mm. starts to crumble, something starts to crack, and it can feel like a breakdown, but I feel that they're also breakthroughs. And uh, that's what it was for me. I love that. Um, you know, I want to take you back to that moment. You pull over, you're vibrating with uncertainty, overwhelm, underwhelm, all of these things. But you should be happy, but you should be happy. When you first tried to talk to the people around you about what you were experiencing, um, what were you met with? Um, well, I didn't say a lot about it because mm. of the conversations and the views that were already a normal conversation. Hmm. So I held back because I felt that I wasn't good enough. Wow. I had to work harder. I had to push harder. And, and then when I did start to talk about it, I did have resentment. And that did not help things go over well either. Resentment how? I felt, I felt some resentment in that. Why didn't the people around mm. me get it? And, mm. and to a large degree now, I feel that we can't expect others to rescue us and to help us because they only know what they've experienced. And, You're so right. you know, coming from a small town here in Newfoundland. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, proud from St. Vincent's and St. Mary's Bay. Love. And uh, I love my home and I love my family. Sure. Um, and I frequent there quite often. My kids love it there. But I, I think that if you want something different, it is you that has to go out and find that. So true. And if we're expecting others to give us what we need all the time, we're kind of missing the point of our own growth, stand on our own two feet. So well, can someone just like pick me up and stand me on my feet for me? Like, isn't that what we want? We want the easy answer. We don't want to do the work. We don't even conceptualize that there is work to be done. So you start moving forward. You start taking the steps, getting on your two feet. What did that look like? What was that process like? Well, I have always been uh, the person who asks the questions, the okay. hard questions, oftentimes the triggering questions. Mm. Um, I don't like having skeletons in my closet. And, and I think that that intuition and that, that I had ever since I was a kid I just listened to that more. What did it and, say? And it, it was just, this can't be it. This can't be it. It was a cycle. I felt like I was living in a fog. Mm. Every day was Groundhog Day. Mm. And I just knew that if I wanted to change my story, I was the writer. I had to get up and seek the answers. And I had to do something that I had not done before because if I kept doing that, that, that was insanity. So. So I had to be the one to go out and find uh, tools and to talk to people who understood and validate myself. And so, you know, this journey, listening to all the sources, gleaning, thinking, planning, led you into a new industry. Yeah, yeah. So I had uh, no background in fitness, no background in meditation, yoga, healing, any of that. I didn't know anything about that. But like I said, when my kids were young and I needed to get out of bed and I needed to be there for them and I wanted the best for them. Sure. But I needed to lead by example. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be strong for them. I wanted them to be proud of me. And uh, so I did what I could, which was moving my body. So it started with fitness um, and, I, and I, I wanted the world for them. I wanted no limitations for them. So then I started thinking, well, why can't I have that? Why not me? Right. And that's what I say to my clients, why not you? Anybody can do these things, but you have to start and you have to do things you've never done before. So started with the fitness and then it moved from there. And where?
Well, um, the physical part I got down pat right away because I am a pusher <laughs> and I know how to get things done. I'm very self-disciplined. Once I commit, that is it. Um, but that pushing came at a price. How so? Well, it was just chaos in my mind. I was mm. doing the things, my body was transforming. Sure. Um, I learned a lot about how my mind could achieve whatever I programmed it to achieve, but there were still things going on out there. And there were still dynamics in my life that weren't quite aligning with what I thought I deserved. Right. So that's when the meditative part came in. Okay. Yeah, so everything that I offer now is something that I learned for myself to help heal myself and my family. And if after that, I could do something else with it, amazing. It's amazing. But once I'm into something, I want to know everything about it. And so that's kind of where the certifications and the evolution of the whole thing came. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I applied to me and, and then I healed myself, I healed my family. And now, you know, so I was picking away offering things to people on the side when I was trying to manage my own mental health. <laughs> right. And, and then COVID really was the eye opener for me. What did that feel like during the initial stages of that and what gifts did that give you? Well, when COVID hit, it, being in isolation was not a new feeling to me. Hmm. I, I felt like I was still struggling. I had gained a lot. I had learned a lot. I had healed a lot but um, there were still some things not quite aligned and I needed to make even more changes and heal myself even more from um, habits and patterns and the energy that I was giving off. And when, um, you know, my, my, I know that my energy impacts others around me and especially the ones closest to me. So I knew that some unhealed parts of me earlier mm. when I was uh, a younger mom had impacted my kids. And so I really wanted to give them um, a better version of me as well. Mm. So when COVID hit, it was just like, this is it. This is change. This is not a, any coincidence. And I think it caused a lot of people to look at their life and think, okay, are we going to keep going like this? Or are we going to make some big life changes? So, you know, I didn't have any control on what was going on outside of my home, but I did have control over what I was doing. So all these little steps and all these things that I had learned and all the messes that I've made and, and uh, which I, I really think are life lessons there. helped me to be where I am today. Well, I'll tell you what, time is flying. Yeah. I have two minutes and I wanna make sure everyone watching understands what Meridian via your journey that we've learned so much about and are loving so much and what types of experiences and people have with you, full stop, what are, what are they? Tell me everything. Well, um, just before COVID hit, mm -hmm. I have um, I gained naturopathic designation. Oh wow! With all, yeah, so crazy. Congrats! <laughs> Thank you so Major. much. Major. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I, I really believe in the power of healing yourself, but I also believe that you cannot do it all alone, and that's mm. where community comes in totally. and to try different things. So. So there's a variety of things that I offer, such as, well, uh, the fitness, I'm not so much into that anymore, but I still, it's still part of our, our mandate and our values. So it's more working with the mind first and the nervous system. Okay. Yeah, so with Reiki, meditation, life coaching, um, several types of yoga, nutrition is in there, um, natural Can I get this health. virtually? <laughs> Can I get this virtually? You can get it virtually, okay. you can get it in person. I have a clinic actually in this end of town. So you can come in person, you can come online. And um, since the COVID thing hit as well, I decided to not continue pushing mm. and to work smarter, mm -hmm. not harder. Mm -hmm. So I packaged everything into one virtual program. Love Every that. day of the week, you get something for you and it's wellness your way. Wow. Yeah. Um, the people around you who have seen you evolve to the powerhouse that you are in this final moment. Um, you know, what is your advice to folks watching at home who may be pulled over on the side of their own road right now? <laughs> I want to tell you that you, whatever you have in your mind that when, when you were little, 
if there was something that really brought joy and zest you, you can still have that. <laughs> you are the creator. You, you will be met when you reach out for help and make, make the changes. You will be met with the universe and everything will come to you. But it's, it's a nonstop thing. You have to keep at it. Mm -hmm. And the, the result is amazing. Um, I will tell you all as we go to break is the energy and the confidence and the um, everything I'm absorbing from you in this hang is like making me feel like anything is possible. Clearly your clients appreciate the gifts that you give to them and that feeds you as well so everybody wins. How can folks get at you online before we go to break? Well, I am on Facebook, I'm on um, Instagram. Those are the main things. I have a website as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Donnie, I, I wanna thank you for having me here and it's a reciprocal energy, you know? I love it. It's, I love it. It's a constant thing and there's many ups and downs, but now I have the tools to keep myself on a more balanced, and it's never completely balanced, it's balancing. Sure. And uh, that makes all the difference. Will you come back again? Oh my gosh, without a doubt. Can't wait. Thank you so much. Guys, this is Out of the Fog. We'll be right back to wrap after this break. Well, everybody, what can I tell you about this episode of Out of the Fog? Two amazing individuals coming through to talk about what they're doing. And guess what? They're both daring greatly. That's what we love to do. So make sure you tune in next time. And make sure you check out all these amazing folks who come together to make this show what it is. I mean, give me a break. We'll see you guys next time. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. I looked at my kingdom. I was finally there to sit on my throne. Bel Air, new series, premieres Monday, February 14th, only on Showcase. Focus on uplifting our queer youth through the power of digital storytelling. As a two-spirit person, I use they, them pronouns. But that's not the case for every two-spirit person. There are so many voices out there that we didn't have 10 years ago, 20 years ago. No matter what your mind tells you, you really are perfect the way you